Hey everyone, Josh Krieger, co-host of Edge of NFT, live at VCon and in a very fun recording environment uh, at the gala sort of music activation here with the one and only Sarah Buck, CEO of Gala Music and Film. Great to uh, have a chance to chat with you today. Yeah, thank you. Just for the benefit of the tape, we did have a false start. And during that false start, he did say, you say the best or last, just so we've got it on the record that you true, did say true, that in I the did. first introduction. So I would like that just on the tape. Yeah, but that's I, fine. I, it it is it's a lovely more, to oh, be I, here. I, I, I've been <laughs> excited about this. You know, I had Jason um, on the show uh, a couple months ago. And, we, you know, of course, we focus a little bit more on the gaming side. But he did talk a little bit about um, the film and music side. And, and David Bianchi is a, a dear friend of ours, someone that's been in our orbit for a long time. And he's been talking about it. So I personally have been a fanboy of what you guys have done in, in terms of trying to um, evolve uh, this really critical aspect of, 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 I'd say, just innovation. It's not really Web3. I mean, it's, it's about cultural innovation, and it starts with film and music. I mean, that is the epicenter of it all, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I think um, it's interesting. When pe we moved, um, when we sort of evolved just out of games, people thought we were crazy. And like, what are you doing? You need to be focused. This is where your heartland is. And it's like, of course it is. It makes a ten tons of sense. But what is game? Like, wh what is a game? I have an answer for right? you. I, I think what you're going to say, because I just heard this recently, a game is a story. A game is, is a film, right? Is, is you're going to get top marks for that as an answer. Yes. I know. I'm, I'm supposed to ask the questions, not answer the questions. It's great. I but, love it. We could, we but could you asked the questions. So. You've been interviewing all day, so yeah. like, we could do it that way around. And so, you know, from our point of view, and you're exactly right, like it's this trifecta of people love to have fun, they love to have experiences, they love to like escape for a little minute, they love to socialize, like, all of these different things. And I don't know that there's anybody on the planet that doesn't have a love of music, maybe a different type of music to someone else. But, you know, that kind of immersive um, content and entertainment is so incredibly important. And it made a hell of a lot of sense. Like we tackle games, which time to market much longer, complexity much more intricate in terms of you know all of the mechanics and stuff around it. So film and music for us is actually film is like, like sort of halfway in between, I would say, um, in terms of timeline. And then you've got music, which is actually really quick, you know, to market um, media format as well. So between all three, we've pretty much got everything covered. And the fact that they can all play together um, makes it really exciting as well. So it takes a special type of person to sort of sign up for the role that you have. <laughs> uh, um, or a crazy one, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I want to rewind a little bit. How did how did we get here? How did how did how did you yeah, how get, did get, get involved in, in Gala? Maybe, you know, what were some of the sort of key moments of your career that sort of led you to this journey? So, um, yeah, how, well, how did I get to Gala? I was I was pretty much tricked into joining Gala. <laughs> and so that is an actual true story. And um, so I've had a really, I would say, eclectic career. I've never wanted to work for anyone um, because I've got a real sense of, I've got a very um, big work ethic um, and I'm very happy to sort of eat what I kill and all that kind of stuff. So I was always a gun for hire for very big brands, very large companies, launching products, um, marketing things, moving people. I'm a storyteller, um, but I've got some other skills uh, tucked in there as well. I'm quite old. Uh, so I've gained a few things over time. and. You know, we were having a conversation one day, and it was when Gala was sub-10 people uh, when the conversation started, um, sub-20 when I joined, and um, we were just kicking around ideas about they needed a COO of, of Gala. And uh, me and one of the guys that was working with Gala at the time, we were very close to, we were talking about all of the kind of candidates you would want in a company that's as unhinged and as crazy as Gala. Uh, I've never met uh, a team that was so ferocious and so... Basically, they just didn't care. It was like there was nothing that they thought was, you know, impossible. They were so brave and so bullish. And it sounds we, like they all went to like 20, 20 Tony Robbins seminars. They just like <laughs> they were just unhinged. They were like just didn't care. And and so we we're going through all these people and like COOs are, are generally quite practical people. You know, you want to operationalize things, you want to process and approach and all these kind of things. And um, I was like, that is not going to work in this company. Like if you try and take old school corporate stuff and put it in here, it's just going to get rejected. So you need to think a bit differently. You need someone that can probably go out and get you some studios in. You need someone that maybe pitches investors because that was still on the table then. 
And after I finished my summary, I said, you know, you probably want someone just a bit, bit like me, really. And I'm like, that's good. Um, you've got an interview in half an hour. <laughs> and here I am two and a half years later. So um, I was very much, uh, games has grown a huge amount now. And you know that from interviewing with Jason, you know. This, sure, it's just all about games. It's, I mean, It's huge, right? Yeah. Like 50, 50 things in flight now. Um, stuff net product is now coming to market. We've restructured that team quite a lot so that the game studios have a lot more independence and are able to be... Um, I guess they're much more empowered to do things the way they want and have autonomy, uh, which is really good because it means they can keep up with you know the pace and the change that they need to within their team and within their market. Depending yeah, what I mean, is. there's so many. I, I've learned through the process of interviewing people in that industry. There's so many different niches within the games, and they all yeah. have their different sort of approach to sort of strategy and, and sort of the visual side of it. it. It's a it's a very sophisticated like micro markets that are sort it of really woven is. together. Yeah, it really is. And I think, you know, the industry um, expertise we've got sitting in Gala is truly mind blowing. And it's crazy, right? You don't want to bring in people that have that experience that have been associated with some of the biggest gaming titles you've ever heard of and then put them into a process that feels weird because we're trying to be innovative. So I think that mix, we, we've got it right now with the, you know, the, sort of the blockchain aspects and the technology aspects, the gamification versus tokenization. That's always a delicate balance as well. And so when um, we launched music or we sort of made our intention for music known uh, last year, um, I started looking at it like, this is interesting to me because it's something that I can really champion and, and own. I love the fact you're subtly trying to move your microphone. You're such a pro. Um, and so, yeah, I've moved over into the, to the music and film side of the business um, and I'm leading that now. Um, and I think that was the one thing always to reassure the community is that we're not compromising anything. We're adding people with the right skills to do these new businesses. We're not like putting a game designer on something to do with music would be nothing short of bizarre. Like it doesn't work like that. So we're, there's no sort of crossover with the team efforts or anything like that. So it gives us the ability to scale pretty quickly. Cool. Well, we're, we're, we're here at like a, a music centered, um, you know, booth that you guys did for, for VCon. What, what brought you here and, and sort of what sort of point in the sort of evolution of the music side of the house are you at this moment? So what brought us here is we were here last year, actually. We're not here because it's in a different city this year, but we were at VCon and we did a big games activation. Uh, and we did a couple of panels as well. And I actually spoke on a music panel last year. And I always feel that like when you come around for like a year two on something like this, it's always good for people to lean in and make sure it's a success like last year, particularly because the market dynamics are completely different to totally. this time last year. So I think it's like you need to show up for each other. And this year we didn't want to show up for ourselves so much as show up for the artists. So the thing we're sitting in right now has been used over the last couple of days. We had 16 artists come and perform, um, record their tracks in here, um, and then everybody got headphones outside and so they could yeah. be part of the recording session and then vote on their favorite and the winner who was uh, announced earlier is now going to be on the vcon stage tonight performing to a stadium well this will be shown later so so you can reveal the winner so it's yeah so we've got three people up there and we've got our two previous open mic winners so we've got the uh just shocky he's from la uh we've got emily who's from nyc open mic and then the um uh, raging, uh, raging casuals are from this activation today. So we're like really pleased, and they're a group. So they're our first sort of band to go up uh, and perform tonight. So cool. that's pretty exciting. Well, I'm excited to check them out in, in a few hours. And I guess like um, you know, I, I met one of the performers. I decided he was one of your, uh, I guess, first sold out bronze artists on your platform. How many artists have have a part of the platform at this point? And like what's what's going on um, behind the scenes there? Yeah, so we've got over 50 emerging artists now on the platform. Um, we've got some big names as well. So people like Snoop have been involved for a long time. And I do lean on people like that quite a lot because my ignorance is sometimes a real benefit because it means you're not restricted by what the industry has created, but obviously you need the expertise to navigate it and we've, we've fueled the team for well, that as we well. All, we all know Snoop is such a, a sort of pioneer in so many different like forms of, of creativity and he loves Web3, you know, Cordell is a big yeah. fan as well. So um, that, And he's that, an amazing storyteller, right? Yeah. Snoop is an entertainer and storyteller. So. 
when you've got people like that involved in your business, it's it's very useful to you because you can dive into their networks, you can dive into their their thoughts and feelings about things, and and see often a perspective that you you yourself can't. So that's really good. Uh, the platform itself had so it's fully decentralized. It's hosted by a node network. Um, we've got seven thousand nodes active right now, pre live token. This. <laughs> We got some. We got some interlude music going on. We got some really on. nice background going on here. Yeah, we can dance to this. Okay. Um, I don't know. It, I think the sound's going to be okay, right? How loud is it? Do we think? We can hear it. We can hear it. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll just we've roll with it. This. You know, it, it's we after. We are at a party. To it's be it's fair. edge of NFT after hours now. <laughs> uh, and just uh, it's the gonna, crowd. It's going to change the vibe up a bit. We can. Yeah. Um, so the platform has had over a million streams in the first 30 days. Wow. It's still in its test phase as well. So we're pretty happy that um, it's doing what it should be. There's 25,000 nodes in the network. So as the token goes live, we expect all those nodes to come online. This is amazing. It's yeah, yeah. I face. mean, it definitely adds. A, a, it's a first for me. I've done 250 <laughs> something episodes of this show. <laughs> and uh, this is a first. Well, um, just don't ask me to start singing along. You'd regret it. That you don't would be bad. want me to do that either. <laughs> Karaoke is not my friend. Uh, well, that's exciting. And and what's next on the music side of things? Where where are things going? We've got some massive plans. So I think what's interesting, and I. I clocked it today as well. It's like, we need to get out of this space. Like, it's not about bringing people in. It's about us going out totally. and talking to the like the masses and the real people. So for me, it's getting out of our own way um, and allowing people to come in, listen, interact, play, um, and grow the platform. And to do that, we've got some very, very large, uh, well-known brand partnerships that aren't in Web3, that are outside of Web3 to help bring listeners in and to help give you know these emerging artists that visibility in the platform platform they need as well so lots of um, physical activations as well as digital as well but I think getting those big brands on board is really important for our credibility as well as our reach as well. Totally agree and we can have a, a, a another show about sort of some of those partnerships in the future. Before uh, we adjourn, since clearly the party has started. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go and have a dance. That's basically what we're telling you. We're uh, dumping you for a dance instead. Pretty much. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the film side. Um, obviously, Razor is a really cool project that's oh, coming yes, up. It is. Um, yeah. You know, I had a chance to sort of uh, participate in the private re reading of it. Nice. So um, I've got a little bit of alpha. Um, what, what, what's, what's next for that project? And, and maybe for those that that didn't listen to that episode, what is it about you know that project that inspired you to get involved? Uh, so I actually met, it's really lovely you brought this up because I met David Bianchi for the first time at VCon last year. Oh, amazing. So we were at an after event and we got talking and he talked about, he was raising money and I was like, what are you raising money for? And he started talking about the film project and I said, don't do that. Don't give away your stuff. Like we're launching a platform for film, maybe we could work on it together. So before you do that, come and talk to Gala. Uh, the rest is now history. He's one of the, I think we've got eight productions uh, in flight right now. Um, so uh, Razor is a, uh, it's about a dystopian uh, world in the future. Um, and it delves into this sort of dark, almost sci-fi world of neuro implants and the ability of um, a specific individual called Grimm, which is actually played by David Bianchi. And this almost cat and mouse type chase he's got um, with a Detective Thompson and Detective Thompson is actually uh, Mina Savari um, and it's really weird because you know her from things like American Pie and American Beauty and she plays a certain character and interviewing her the other week you know she was like I love this character I love yeah. the depth and the darkness and I think what attracted her to the script was when she was talking about it she was like it's so far from reality, but it's so close. It's so close to things that could and, and might be happening very soon. And she's like, and it terrified me a bit, and that's why I wanted to dive in and get involved. So film will be launching very soon. I don't want to put it live until after the token for music goes live. Um, but then film you know, has a platform ready to roll, um, and so we can put that live. Um, it should be in the summer still. Um, and we've got a nice big launch for that one as well because we're working with uh, Seven Bucks, uh, which is uh, Dwayne Johnson's uh, company. We're working with Unrealistic Ideas, which is Mark Wahlberg's company. We've got animation. We've got um, reality. We're doing a reality thing with Snoop. Uh, that's a leak. People don't know that. Um, we've got comedy, so we're really running at that one as well. So. Well, I would be honored to sleep, be basically. one of your media partners for that event. <laughs> that That'll be, be a lot amazing. of fun. Yeah, um, it will. You know, I've 
I followed his journey since I met him uh, about when we were starting this podcast. So Amazing. we've kind of grown in this space together and um, I know how hard he's working to put this together. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Um, he's got an amazing How dedicated he is to sort of, in, you know, intersecting blockchain um, and in, in his career in film. And, and I think that's what you guys are sort of so focused on as well. Yeah. Um, well, uh, before we head out and, and, and get to the party, it's the end of Econ. Um, just a little bit more about the roadmap. Maybe you can touch on where, where things are going next. Um, what's sort of top of your mind sort of going into um, the summer and, and beyond? Uh, the roadmap's mega. It, like For entertainment, it's, it's crazy. So with games, you'll know there's lots of stuff coming online. We did a vision paper. Um, I'm really keen that the company starts to stick to some of those corporate um, processes. I think it's important for the community, particularly when, like I say, we want to break out of the Web3 community, which I think a couple of years ago were pretty forgiving because it was brand new. But now everybody needs to grow up a little bit and yeah. be a bit more responsible. So music, um, we'll have the All Access Store going live. That's the utility for the token essentially, that's experiences and merchandise and content that you literally cannot buy anywhere else. Um, we've got some major partnerships coming online uh, really for festival season and obviously the token um, going live on exchanges is a big one and then film will launch and film will launch with several titles uh, ready uh, to be streamed so we're really excited about the fact that when we launch that one we're going, we're going all guns blazing. And when you say streaming, what are the distribution channels we're talking about? So um, for film specifically, so you can, f um, all of the titles will be streamed on Gala Film, but then we've got partners that we can then push it out to afterwards. So we might consider, like there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Sometimes we keep an element of exclusive content on Gala Film to keep people coming back. And other times there's an exclusive window so that you can only see on Gala Film, but it depends on the title and the reach of that title as to which strategy we're running with. So we're running with a couple. But what's nice about film, music's, They've got their pros and cons. Music is um, more challenging in some ways because you're not going to go to somewhere else to listen to a two-minute song to then dive back into your normal playlist. So you have to be able to create a continuity of experience for people or a reason that the effort is worth, you know, the, the sort of the value they've got from it. With film, it's a little bit easier because if you've got a 15-minute episode, I don't really mind a click to go somewhere to watch it and then click off again. So it's an interesting dynamic between the two, but music will go in film and then you know so anybody that owns that track that's in that film will also benefit from the listen and earn uh, aspect there as well and and film unsurprisingly is hosted by nodes and it's going to be watch and earn as well so uh, um you know there's a, a little bit of like uh launching a film or, or music production to launching a podcast or doing an event and, and that's overwhelming for me and you're doing so many different projects at once i feel like you're using all possible <laughs> can put parts of your brain I'm, I'm like I'm like getting overwhelmed just hearing it all so I know um, and I have and there's so much I haven't mentioned um, but the good news is Gala has an amazing team um, and I do believe that you know a championship team will be a team of champions any day of the week um, and I definitely have a championship team so sounds like it will be and, good and um, yeah uh, we'll, we'll trade supplement recommendations <laughs> after like, and maybe some sleep patterns people yeah. keep asking me how I'm doing with the time zones and I'm like what time zone yeah. <laughs> we got we to gotta check in with Ariana Huffington who was here earlier giving some tips on that uh, we have to keep our phones outside of our bedrooms that's key yeah apparently Not that's the done. thing who Not, knew right yeah. how can you look at it first thing at 5 a.m. if it's not there like I'd have to get out of bed to do it that would be really not a pleasant thing it's cold at that time in the morning well anyways um, this was great to finally have a chance to catch up with you obviously a lot more to unpack at a future date um, but thanks for spending a little time with us no thank you we should go dance now let's do that's it that's what the um, world is telling us meanwhile uh, for folks who are listening to this and, and not quite ready to dance where do they go to learn more about what you guys are up to well the best place to go bizarrely is Gala Com. And from gala.com, you can dive into games, you can dive into film, or you can dive into music. But um, everything's there. Um, and we do have like the friendliest Discord as well. Like, um, And I'm in there a lot. Um, and I'm very friendly. So I hang out a lot in the music Discord and, and film as well. But uh, we've got the Vox Discord and, of course, the games one as well. So people are always welcome to come in, ask questions. But I think we'll know when we're winning and we know when we're doing something right is when there are no questions. And you don't actually need to be emotionally invested in the company you can just go and enjoy the content um, and that's what we're working towards i dig it i dig it big vision big goals uh, really excited uh, about everything to come thank you so much thank you <laughs>